Greetings friends, I will show you how to solve this puzzle, Sea Skeleton by Wisteria Fall, aka Wisteria. As part of my Setter Spotlight series, I'm featuring four puzzles by Wisteria this month. This one I'm going to use coloring. It's going to be an advanced strategy. You won't want to miss it. It's an awesome way to solve this puzzle. Click below if you want to give it a go. With that, it's solving time. So in order to get where we need to solve this puzzle, we're going to need to fill in some slots. If you notice, there's a lot of digits along rows 1 and 9 and columns 1 and 9. And that's kind of where you need to focus. You're going to need to fill in some of these slots because there's going to be some relationships in these outside blocks. It's going to help us out quite a bit. This can't be a 9. Uh, other thing to know is come on over here and go, this is a 1, 2, or 3. So right off the bat, after you get rid of this 2 and you get rid of this 3, we have a naked triple. Okay, so this is a naked triple. 1, 2, and 3 limit these three spots. Very important. We're going to need this to keep moving on with this puzzle. You need to be able to spot this naked triple. Okay, uh, we do want to finish the outside columns and rows. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are not given. Get rid of the 1 there and get rid of all the 2s. And you can see that that can't be a 4. This can't be a 3, 5. And this can't be a 4, 5. Uh, one thing that struck out to me when I first saw this puzzle is this idea of these 1s, 2s, and 3s. I knew there was something going on there with those, and sure enough, there is. And I'm going to show you how to do it, but you got to pay attention because it's not that easy to spot, and there's a lot of advanced strategies that will get us to the part where we can actually do the coloring. And so you're going to love this. We're gonna, I'm going to peel it back for you one strategy at a time. All right, what we got here? 1, 2, 3, 6, 7. Okay, uh, this cannot be the one or three and then over here can't have the two and then we can't have the seven and then the last bit you do want to kind of look and come over here and put this one two three four in get rid of this one this one's pretty powerful the way it it blocks the ones from this spot and you'll see uh why here in a little bit so i've, I've filled all that the other block you need to care about and this is the intended logic that wisteria put in here is you got to look here in block five because there's only four digits that could be in there and the way they're shaped it creates a great shape that's called uh, an empty rectangle shape is what i call it you see how this cross shape is and i'm about to explain the significance of that here in just a second but first let's get rid of these extra sevens and we got this four we need to get rid of that four Anything else I can eliminate? No. Okay. So now you're like, okay, Timberlake, great. You made a lot of of marks here. What does this mean? Well, it's the empty rectangle is what this means. So whenever you see a shape like this, um, anytime you go into a Sudoku block and you can do what I call slice and dice, you can come through and you can eliminate all the candidates by going through exactly one column and one row. So in this case, we can do that with the twos and the threes, but we're going to focus on the twos right now then this is an empty rectangle shape. The other thing you want to find for the empty rectangle to make sense is you need to look and does the column or the row point to another column or row that has only two of that candidate, which makes a strong link. If it does, then we can make an elimination. So in this case, you see how the two comes out to here to column one, and there's only two twos right there. I'll make those colored, and I'll do this bit right here. What it means is if a two is one of these purple spots, this can't be a two, and then that would be a two, right? And then you'd eliminate a two from this spot right here. Conversely, if one of these spots is a two, you can eliminate a two from right there. Either case, you're going to be eliminating two from this spot. And to try not to confuse things, um, I'll get rid of this color over here. So either way, if the two's in the purple, that won't be a two. If the two's in these yellow, this cannot be a two. And I just showed you that with this empty rectangle. But we're not done because we have another empty rectangle. This time, still using the twos, but now if you look down column or row nine, and maybe you saw this first. Maybe when I start talking about column one, you saw this one down here in row nine. The idea here, the twos in one of these, you know, this would have to be a 
uh, if the two is one of those yellow spots, this could not be a two, this would be a two. And then this cell right here cannot contain a two. Otherwise, if the two is one of the purple, that cannot contain a two. Either way, it cannot contain a two. So we have two very cool empty rectangles using the, uh, the number two here. And in case you're not familiar, I have an empty rectangle tutorial. I'll put a link to that. Go check it out. You'll want to get more familiar with these things because they pop up quite a bit. And there's some alternate strategies that also work the same as an empty rectangle. And while you're at it, don't forget, uh, subscribe to Smart Hobbies. I'd really appreciate that. So making all of these eliminations has been really good for us. But now we need to take it one step further because we're going to move on to the next cool strategy that you need to make some progress. And the cool strategy involves the fact that we just removed this two from right here. So now you want to look is remember we have this one, two, three naked triple. So one, two, and three cannot be in these three spots because they have to be somewhere else in column eight. Where can a one or two be in block six now? Well, it can't be here. It can't be in these three spots. So the ones and twos have to be in, in one of these three spots. This is called, these are called lock candidates. You can see there's a one right here. So the ones have to be in one of those two spots. And then the twos have to be in one of these three spots. Okay, I don't normally mark three twos, but for now they have to be in one of these spots. What it means though is that the twos cannot be, and the ones cannot be anywhere else along column seven because they're restricted, they're locked in block six in column seven. So we can get rid of the one and the two right here. Nice. This creates a naked pair. You notice the three nines are now restricted to uh, these two cells in row one. This is awesome because now we're going to be able to do some solving because now you can eliminate those threes from right there. And we're not done. Keep watching. The next strategy you see is going to be even cooler than what I just showed you. All right. So you got the one, two, and the one, two here. Well, what does that mean for our naked triple in column eight? It means the one and two are limited to those two spots. So I'll give it another color here, red. So that's another naked pair. So well, now this means this cannot be a one anymore. It has to be a three. So we can solve that for a three. How cool is that? All right, I'll get rid of these colors, but we can actually solve a, a cell for a three. Isn't that great? I love it. All right, and so now we can get rid of the three right here, and this leads to our next advanced strategy. I wonder if you see it. You Maybe you do. I just created when I made a one, two right there. It involves these four cells right here. And when I found this, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. Because you had to do all the empty rectangle, naked pair to get to this spot. This is a remote pair. Okay, a remote pair. We have the same two by values, uh, same two cans for by value cells. So one and two, and an even amount, four of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate the coloring here because this will help show what it means for our solving in this puzzle. All right, so what it means that a remote pair is if, you know, the purples have to be the same digit and the yellows have to be the same digit. So like this is a one, that'd be a two, this would be a one, and this would be a two. Same thing, if this is a two, that'd be a one, this is a two, this is a one. We don't know which ones they are yet, but we do know that any place where you see the alternating color uh, you can eliminate a one and two from those cells because either one two is here and the other one has to be here. So look down here. We have a one. We can eliminate that one. That can no longer take a one because it has to be one of these, either the purple or the yellow cell. So that's a remote pair. And that is awesome. And what I want you to do is if you want to understand remote pairs a little more, check out my tutorial on remote pairs. I'll put a link here. But even better, you want to stay tuned because now we're going to get into some really fun coloring because I just started the coloring, but this is not the end of it. And it reminds me of another puzzle that I, I solved recently. Wait till the end. I'll put a link to that. So you want to watch because that puzzle will really show you how much you can do with coloring, even beyond what you're, I'm about to show you. All right. So right here, we know we can solve that for a three. All right. So let's get rid of some of these extra threes now and this coloring actually we can hold on to for a bit because we're not done we're actually going to use this to create another amazing solve check this out so i told you with the twos they have to alternate right well let's come back how many twos are here in column one well this 
is a two. So if it's not a yellow two, that would be a purple two, right? Okay, which means that the other two, if the two's right here, the other, the thing that would have to be a two would be one of those cells. Okay, it also means that uh, you look right here, this would be yellow. Okay, uh, because if, you know, the two's here, it'd be in the purples, all the purples would contain, you know, possibly a can two. If the purple is not here, then it would be, the two would be right there. And so what that means is if the two was here, then the two would have to be one of these yellow spots. Otherwise, the two's here, it have to be one of these purple spots. What's important about that is you, we've just restricted the twos along row five. Because you have a purple here, and you have the yellows here. And we did actually did the same thing along column five, but that's not what's going to help us solve the puzzle. We need to focus on row five. By using this coloring, we know a two's got to be either here, or it's going to be one of those cells. That's the only place it can be in row five. And I'll prove it, right? So twos can be here, right? If it's not there, this would be a two. That would not be a two. This would be a two. That would not be a two. And then this would be a two. Okay. And if this was a two, then one of those has to be a two. Either place, I just said a two's there or some one of those spots. What does it mean for this cell right here? It means a two can't be there anymore. We cannot have a two in this cell. It would break the puzzle. And if you want, put a two and, and solve around the puzzle and you'll see that you're going to break it. What does that mean for us? We just created a hidden pair. Now the one and two are limited to the same two spots. This is great, but we're not done yet. Again, keep watching. The most important part is still to come. The reason and the unique logic here is actually about to happen. So we had to do all this cool coloring to get to this spot right here. And you're going to love it because it involves more coloring and it's actually a little bit easier, but we had to do all this just to get it set up. And it involves the digit three. Because remember how I said that you had a empty rectangle shape, not only for twos, but for threes here in block five, block five, which is the key to this puzzle. Well, now we're gonna use it to help us figure out threes. Okay, you wanna look for spots that have, uh, you know, two of a canon. So that's a strong link. If one's false, the other's true. So let's look across the top here. And we're going to do the same thing with the coloring. So if this, you know, the three's got to be in this spot or this spot. So three's got to be purple or it's got to be yellow. So if a three purple here, where would the three be here in block five? It couldn't be there or there. It'd have to be there. It would have to be right there. Okay. Um, so we know that this, you know, three, if the three's here, the three's there. Okay. What if the three is right here? What does that do to block six? Well, it would mean a three couldn't be anywhere else in column seven. You have this three coming up. So the only other place for a three would be right there. So if the three was here, this would have to be a three. If the three, three is not here, this would be a three. And then this would have to be a three. Hopefully you're following what I'm saying. Guess what? Now with coloring, we know the threes are limited to one of these two spots in row five. It's either gotta be in the purple or it's gotta be yellow. We can eliminate any other possibility for a three along row five. So this could no longer be a three, but more importantly, this cell right here could not contain a three. And since the three is already here in column eight, where could you put a three in block six? It has to be here now. We've just solved where the three is gonna be in block six. All right, and then with our color, and we know that that's going to also have to be a three. And the reason being is the threes are limited from this spot. A three is in one of these two cells, like we've already proved. So that means this would eliminate a three from right here. So you can solve that for the nine, and it puts the three right there. Got it? So this is no longer a three either. Let's get rid of this coloring. What do you think about that? All this to get to this spot right here figure out the coloring. And again, stay tuned to the end. I got another amazing solve that involves coloring. It actually takes us to another level. There's more coloring than just this. You'll want to stick to the end to figure this out. And we're not out of the woods yet. We still got to solve the rest of this puzzle. But we've made significant progress. 
let's start removing some of these extra candidates. So where we want to start is you want to look and finish column seven. We need a six, seven, and a nine. Well, nine can't be here and it can't be here. So we know this is going to be your nine. And since we have the seven, that's a six and that's going to be a seven. Now we can go over here and start solving in block five because now the seven is limited to that spot. This has got to be your four and this is going to be your three. Okay, look at all those great solves we just did. Now, let's turn our attention over here. You got this four, two. This has now got to be a five, which means this is a one, that's a four. And now we can figure out this remote pair, two, one, two, one. Here's your six, there's your seven, and there's your two. Not done yet. Keep watching, right? We still got a lot more solving going on here. All right. So then we want to solve, uh, take away the one right there. And now you're like, okay, where do we go from here? You kind of want to look like, what does this puzzle give me? Okay. So we have a six and a six, columns four and six. You got six cut across here. There's only one spot left for a six in block eight. So we can make that mark. And then also curious about the ones. We can actually solve for the one right there. And now we know that this is going to be a naked triple. So we know we can solve this cell. What's the missing? Uh, candidate from row seven here. It's that five, right? The five can't be here or here. This has got to be your five. So you, when you see a pattern like that, make take advantage of it and use it to solve the rest of the puzzle. So we got here uh, a nine. This has got to be eight or nine. So here's your nine and here's your eight. Nice. And then um, we talked about this being a seven, eight, or nine, naked triple, seven, eight, or nine. We can actually solve that. And here's the pattern that will help you solve a naked triple. I'm going to reveal another trick to you. You see a seven and eight here and a seven there. We know we can solve this because this has got to be your nine. That's got to be your eight. And that's got to be your seven. So whenever you see two of the same candidate and then one of the others doubling in a row, you know you can solve all three. Uh, really helpful. Eight, eight with this eight means this can be an eight right there. Again, and we're not done. Keep watching because now we got a full house. We want to do some cleanup. This is where it gets tricky. If you don't do it right, you might make a mistake and think you broke the puzzle. So keep on watching. Work on your technique. You'll get faster, very fast, if you can keep on working on how to get these naked hidden singles at the end of the puzzle. Because I can watch how I do it. Um, hopefully, it will help you out. So what we need right here, we need a three and a six. I got my six right there. So there's six, there's three. Okay. Now, three, three, and three means this has to be a three. Okay, looking good, looking good. And then we got another full house, so we know we can solve that for a two, which is going to help us with our marks. Always try to get rid of those marks uh, it, the first chance you get. And now we're looking for, it looks like a five, seven. I got a seven right here. There's seven, and there's five. We'll come over here, and we'll solve for the five and the four, and then we'll finish off block two. Awesome. And so now where do we want to go? I want to look for, you know, great restriction here. We're looking for a one and a four. Oh, I actually can't solve that yet. Crazy. Okay. But we can maybe come over here, six and eight. Here's your six. So there's your eight. Come across row five. And then that's going to be your six. Awesome. And now maybe we can solve over here, huh? Look for a two and a three. Oh, okay. This is much better. So here's your three. Here's your two. Now we can solve these remaining marks. One of the two, that hidden pair that helped us out so much. And now with the ones, always try to see if you can solve for the next candidate there. And the four, look over here. Do we have a four? Nope, we don't. So that's got to be your four, and this has got to be your eight. So check out this other video featuring color. You're going to love it. And you will want to see how I solved that puzzle. Don't forget to buy me coffee link below. If you want to support small hobbies, click on it. I'd appreciate your support. Thank you, Wisteria, for another great puzzle. I love featuring you during the month of December. Thank you so much for watching.